year, our valedictorian is Myra Pastor. Myra Jolie. everybody, family and friends, we are just so thankful that you are here to support us during this momentous event of our lives. And But first, you know, I want to give thanks to our Almighty Father because if it's not for His mercy and grace, I wouldn't even be here. So thank you, Father, for your unconditional love for me and your redeeming grace through Christ Jesus. For through Him and in Him, I am now a new creation. I don't take this lightly. <laughs> this means a lot to me. But I want to thank everyone who has supported me along the way. First of all, my loving husband truly is a gift from God. He's supporting me along the way. And um, my children, who has put up with me while I burned the midnight oil, <laughs> you know, trying to study the Word of God so that going through that process, I may be the mother, the wife, and the person that God wants me to be. And um, I know that I know that I know now that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Especially for believing in me and just being there for me, pouring out on me and supporting me. Thank you so much. Well, my fellow graduates, congratulations. Well done. <laughs> I know that it has taken a lot of weeks, months, years, and a lot of sacrifice of time, and it has culminated to this day, our graduation day. But you know, um, this is not the graduation day of our lives. And uh, we may be asking ourselves, what do we do now? And it's actually the most commonly asked questions of anybody who finishes their education. And that's kind of what I want to address this afternoon. And I hope you have mercy and grace on me too. <laughs> um, perhaps the reason why I'm here this afternoon is just to encourage you, fellow graduates, and everyone in this room to continue, you know, to fight the good fight of faith to continue to put Jesus Christ first in our lives, and to continue to follow Him completely, completely unrestrained. We may have finished our biblical studies and our biblical courses, like I said, but our spiritual course is not finished yet. And the same is true for everyone. Our, the ultimate graduation of our lives is when we face our Creator and King after our earthly lives are over, and our eternal life has commenced. In my ministry, I've seen many ministers and pastors without Bible college background, and yet I see the passion that they have and the diligence that they have in the proclamation of the kingdom of God. And yet, as graduates, we are so privileged you know, to have an in-depth knowledge of the Word of God. And God doesn't want us to be just hearers of the Word, but He wants us to be doers of the word. And so I want to encourage you, you know, today that when we ask ourselves, what do we do now? Please consider God's word that to whom much is given, much is required. To everyone, we are the sum of our decisions and what we do now, where we go matters and it matters to the Lord. So we need to consider our motive. Why did we go to Bible college to begin with? Why did we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Is it for personal gain? Or is it to have an, an eternal impact for everyone else around us? And we need to consider our master. If it is the Lord Jesus Christ, then we should not be afraid to proclaim His kingdom, as many others are. And He promises to never leave us nor forsake us. So if He is true to His promises, then He is there for us. And we all know that we don't have to be ministers or pastors or evangelists. We could be mothers or just regular employees, but we can proclaim the kingdom of God. I do know that we have all been called to do something, but the ultimate calling of our lives is to follow Jesus. Following Jesus is what I believe really is what we need to go after. Following Jesus means following everything that He does, everything that He says. Following Him for everything that He is. For everything that He is, regardless of our situations, regardless of our circumstances. Without inhibitions, without any excuses, without limitations. And 
without any shame. The passages in Luke chapter 9 verses 57 to 62 have really been speaking to me this year. And if I may just read, it talks about the true cost of discipleship. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. Jesus said, and then another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell, those who are at my house. And let me emphasize this, my family and friends. Jesus said, no one having put his hands on the plow and looking back is worthy of the kingdom of God. Some deep, deep words from our Lord, my friends and family. But you know what? We all have put our hands on the plow. When we have put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we have put our hands on the plow. And yet the question is, are we really following Him? Are we doing what He has commanded us to do? Let's ask ourselves today, what part of God's word do we choose to obey and which ones do we choose not to heed because of inconvenience, because of discomfort, because of grief, because of pride, or because we're simply afraid. And so we'd rather just be complacent and not do anything or just go back to our old ways. So therefore, I believe that the question we should be asking ourselves today is not what do we do now, but rather are we willing to pay the price to follow Jesus? Or are there things or habits that we can't give up? Are there people or things of the past that we can't leave behind? Or simply just circumstances that are holding us back, you know, to follow Him completely? While well, you may be asking yourselves, what do we do now? God may be asking you to move your residence because of ministry call, just as my husband and I are being called to move to the Philippines. Or maybe to plant a church, start a ministry, or a new job where God is going to use you mightily. Now the question is, are you willing to make that move? Would you rather not want to get out of your comfort zone? Which one it is? Ask yourself, are you willing to follow Jesus, even if it means leaving or being separated from your loved ones? Even if it means that you are going to put your desires last? Or even if it means using all your, all your resources to benefit the kingdom of God? Are you willing to suffer trials and tribulations? Are you willing to face persecution? Many of us Christians here in the United States are just led to a, a comfortable seat in a church and don't even mean, know what it means to be persecuted or what it means to face trials and tribulations. We think that our problems are trials and tribulations in itself when we're not even contending for the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. My friends, there is a power in following Jesus Christ for He will equip us and He already has. He has given us the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to comfort us, to convict us, and also to empower us. And there is also a reward in following Him. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it says that we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And that we will receive the things done in the body according to what we have done, whether good or bad. Now, how would you feel when you face him, face to face, and you have put him last? I'm sure he will put you last. So what do we do now? My brothers and sisters, the word of God tells us in Ephesians 4, 1, and I have heard this as Shay prayed today, that we must walk worthy of the calling for which we were called. As born and grand Christians, we have all been called into the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to follow Him, that is our calling. Whatever specific work God wants us to do, He has prepared that in advance and He will reveal it to us. But first, we must answer His call to follow Him. So, we must consider how we live our lives. First, we must submit 
our lives willingly to God. Submitting to God means total surrender. You see, there is a difference between commitment and surrender. Being, a, being committed means that when things become difficult for you, when things become unbearable, you can easily uncommit or change your mind. So you can just quit. But that's why the Bible tells us that in the last days there will be apostasy and a great falling away from the faith. And yet, to surrender means relinquishing, relinquishing all your rights and your free will to God. My friends, we should not be committed followers of Christ, but we must be surrendered followers of Christ. And in order to do that, we must study. Study the Word of God. My fellow graduates, our study of the Word of God does not end here today at our graduation day. And the same is true for everyone. It is a lifelong process so that we may grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And, and in, that promise, in that process, we may be conformed to His image completely. In the second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, To study to show ourselves approved to God a workman that needs not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And then we must show our faith. We must live it out. We must be salt and light of the world, just as Ken Gardiola is. And let our lives be pleasing sacrifice to God so that others may be drawn to what we have. And in that process, they will be drawn to God. And then we must stand. Stand for our faith. Stand for the truth. Don't be blown away by any wind of doctrine. When we hear the name of our Lord Jesus being blasphemed, don't just sit and don't do nothing. Because we must defend it through scriptures. The Bible tells us the word of God is living and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrows. And lastly, we must share our faith. Fellow graduates, you have been equipped with the Word of God. And brothers and sisters, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. We, all, we have all that we need to proclaim God's kingdom. Jesus said in John 14, 12, that if you believe in me and the works that I do, you will do also with greater works than this you shall do. Continue to push forward. 
and follow him unrestrained without any excuses. To finish the curse, the, the course, and break the curse that is upon a lot of Christians right now. Being complacent, the sin of complacency. And I urge all of you to do the same. But for now, fellow graduates, congratulations and well done. My brothers and sisters for being there for us, pastors for being here for us, well done. But I urge you, that let us continue to take this journey together, the journey of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may not be ashamed when we face Him, face to face, at the beat of seat, that we may get our rewards and not remorse. And so we may all hear our God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you, Myra. That was precious. We really appreciate that.